Light is a rather amazing and extraordinary thing. But you probably don't see it that way. Light has become so ordinary and normal in our lives that we've even invented a word to describe it, light pollution. If you don't believe me, go see John Hodge in a little bit and he'll tell you about how it ruins the telescopes, all this light pollution, right? But how many of you have power connected up to your homes? Every single one of you. Imagine that. What a trick. And when you walk into a room at night, do you, like me, flip up the switch? And what happens? Light without end. And as long as you keep sending Dominion power your check every month, every t you don't send them the check, it's not working anymore. But if you keep paying them, Every time you flip on the switch, the light comes on and it will stay on until you put it out. Well, yes. Now imagine, though, have you remember what happened when the power goes out and you flip the light and try to see in your house? What happens? It doesn't work, right? Because there's no power. And then it's like super hard to find stuff, isn't it? Well, you can find furniture with your toes. And that hurts a lot. Or if you've memorized your house. Or if you've memorized your whole house. Now what happens if you take one candle and strike one little match and light it and hold the candle up? You can see. How much light does a candle really produce though? Not that much. Not as much as even a tiny little Christmas light bulb will, right? And yet, you can see the whole room. Or an even better story is if you've ever been out in the woods, and not like the woods you can see around here, but like proper woods where there are no lights for miles and miles. And you light one little flashlight, and it's amazing how bright that light seems. Or better yet, you light no flashlights, no headlamps, and no fire. And if you wait a few minutes and the moon is out, you can walk safely by the light, the stars, and the moon. A tiny little sliver of light and hope can guide you through the dark and scary woods. That is what these magi saw. This tiny sliver of light and hope in a star. And so they start walking towards the light and out of the darkness. And when they get there, they find he who is the light of the world, Jesus himself lying in a little manger. It was that sliver of hope and light that made Jesus known to the Gentiles. That's you. That sliver of light and hope made Jesus known to you. There is no star that sits over Christian churches now to light the way. I've gone outside at night and looked. I've checked the star charts with John. That's really a lie of not. But if I did, there wouldn't be one, would there? But you are the light, that sliver of hope in the world. Next week, we are going to have two baptisms at our family service, where two more of us will receive the light of Christ in their lives, and they will be given that little light of their own to shine forth into the darkness. A light that you have already received. But the Christian faith is never more than one generation from extinction.
Because if your little light and my little light doesn't shine to show people the way, they can't see it. May the light of Christ be enkindled in your life and shine brightly, that others might come to know who Jesus is through the way you live. Amen. 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 My brothers.